WWE records nobody wants to break. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. The most disliked WWE YouTube clip of all time. Now after the Royal Rumble at the start of 2024, WWE aired a segment on SmackDown which broke the internet. In the segment, Cody Rhodes would announce that he was giving up his WrestleMania spot that he had earned in the annual Royal Rumble match, and instead, The Rock was taking his spot in the match. The segment was confusing, nonsensical, and ultimately made the babyface, that being the American Nightmare, look utterly stupid. The backlash to the booking move was instant and notable, as the segment within a matter of days became the single most dislike upload on WWE's official YouTube channel. As things stand, the segment has almost 750,000 dislikes, a truly insane number, and the number continues to grow on a daily basis. The reception to this segment was so overwhelmingly negative that WWE were forced to pivot and change direction. The planned Rock vs Roman Reigns match was scrapped, and WWE proceeded to book a heel turn for The Rock, and Rhodes vs Reigns Part 2 was the new direction for WrestleMania 40, the most losses in WWE history. Whilst WWE is scripted, wins and losses are key to keeping a wrestler credible. Logic would assume that a wrestler with the most losses in WWE history would be a lower card talent or even an enhancement talent. However, in reality, the dishonor goes to a former two-time WWE champion. The name in question is former WWE champion The Miz who has lost over 1,300 matches, as of this video exactly 1,335 matches, but this is throughout his WWE tenure. This is a statistic and a record that is unlikely to ever be broken. The record was even used in a storyline as it was referred to numerous times in 2023 that The Miz was on a consistent and prominent losing streak. Despite having this record, it hasn't impacted Miz's credibility too much as due to Miz's star power and promo ability, he's able to present himself as credible with one brief yet intense promo. The Worst Drawing WWE Champion of All Time Winning WWE's top prize should be the height of a wrestler's career. However, if the rain fails to catch fire and fails to capture the excitement of the fans, it can be highly detrimental to the wrestler's aura and legacy. The record for the worst drawing WWE Champion of all time unfortunately goes to Kevin Nash aka Diesel. Diesel's WWE title reign in the mid-90s came at a time in which WWE product was struggling to find an audience. Attendance was down, ratings were plummeting, and the wrestling audience had decided that the WCW product was the wrestling product that they were going to invest their time and money into. WWE executive Bruce Pritchard spoke on his podcast regarding claims of Diesel being the worst drawing champion in company history, and this is what he had to say. People put the heat on Diesel. Uh, I did. I, I remember the, the night that we went to shoot the angle with Goldust and Razor in Portland, Maine or Bangor, Maine, and Vince was in with Razor and Goldust or whatever, and I'm outside with, with Hunter and Diesel, and Diesel says, you know, I'm the, the lowest earning WWF champion of all time. I said, well, it goes hand in hand with the lowest drawing WWF champion. And Kevin and I had a few heated words at that point, and you, you look back, and, and it's true, yeah. When you truly look at it in hindsight, and you look at it with fresh eyes in a fair assessment. He didn't inherit, no, he didn't inherit anything. He inherited uh, the championship at a time where the business was at a low point and there wasn't an awful lot you know, for him to work with from that point moving ahead. Whilst it's hard to argue against the cold hard facts that Diesel was the worst drawing champion in history, he did manage to become a legitimate drawer later in his career. The most losses at WrestleMania. WrestleMania is WWE's premier event, and it's in a wrestler's best interest if they have a credible win-loss record at the big event. In relation to which WWE wrestler holds the record for the most losses at the signature event, it's surprisingly Triple H. This comes as a surprise as it's been a common misconception for years that Triple H never put over talent, and it's often claimed that he buried talent during the height of his career. During his career at WrestleMania, the game has put over names such as Batista, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and even the Ultima Warrior. The game has lost 13 times in total, which is crazy to think about. A wrestler losing this many times at WrestleMania is unlikely to ever be replicated, especially in an era where it's actively encouraged by fans that wrestlers obtain a WrestleMania win at one point in their career. The most chair shots to the head in a single match. The I Quit match between The Rock and Mankind at 1999's Royal Rumble is one of the most infamous matches in WWE history. 
The match featured Mankind taking a total of 11 brutal chair shots to the head. Unfortunately, the match is aged like milk, as a ton of research over the past two decades has been done in relation to concussions and the impact of chair shots. Thankfully, chair shots of this nature have been banned in WWE, and WWE will never book a wrestler to take severe punishment like this ever again. This is a sinister and borderline disturbing record, and one that will thankfully never be broken in WWE. The Worst WWE Match Ever a Dave Meltzer star ratings have always led to discourse online, and it goes without saying that no wrestler wants Meltzer to award their match with a negative star rating. Numerous matches throughout WWE history have been awarded with a negative star rating, and as of this writing, the worst match in WWE history, according to Meltzer's star ratings, is Mr. T vs. Roddy Piper from WrestleMania 2, which received a minus 5 star rating. The match itself was a 13 minute boxing match, and it completely died in front of a live audience. Fans hated it, and not even the incredibly charismatic Piper could save it from being a total disaster. It could certainly be argued that due to the match being a boxing match, it doesn't count as a WWE match. And if that is indeed the case, then the record for the worst WWE match ever goes to another minus 5 star match of Moondog Spot vs Junkyard Dog from the Wrestling Classic from 1985. The dreadful matchup lasted just 45 merciful seconds and it made WWE and the two aforementioned wrestlers look completely incompetent. The least attended WWE pay-per-view main event When a wrestler main events a pay-per-view event, they hope their respective match is strong enough and interesting enough to draw a huge crowd. Holding the record for being the least attended WWE pay-per-view main event of all time is a terrible look for a wrestler, and it's interesting to dissect exactly why the pay-per-view had a lack of interest. The record for the lowest attended WWE pay-per-view in history goes to Taboo Tuesday 2004. This was the first ever Taboo Tuesday event and it was attended by 3,500 fans, which was low even for a live event, never mind a major WWE pay-per-view. The show was a brand new concept, so fans likely didn't know what to expect. And of course, the show taking place on a Tuesday certainly didn't help draw in a substantial crowd. The show was main evented by Randy Orton vs Ric Flair and the fans were allowed to pick the match type for the main event and they ultimately opted to go with a steel cage encounter. The match itself was vastly underrated, yet WWE's call not to go with a world title match in the main event slot was a bizarre one from a business perspective. The concept did somewhat work for WWE as although the attendance was abysmal, the attendance the following year was 6,000 which was a vast improvement. WWE did eventually decide that whilst the concept worked, the Tuesday slot for a pay-per-view wasn't going to work so from 2006 onwards, the fan interactive pay-per-view would be moved to Sunday and rebranded as Cyber Sunday. Now it's worth noting that this record relates to WWE pay-per-view events that took place outside of the COVID-19 era as obviously fans weren't permitted to attend events during this time so attendance figures can't be analysed. The Shortest WWE Title Reign this record relates to strictly the WWE title as opposed to any other world title WWE has introduced over the years. When a wrestler wins the WWE title, they hope that WWE will proceed to book them in a lengthy reign that lasts several months, or even longer if the title reign is popular with fans. The legendary wrestler who holds the record for the shortest WWE title reign of all time is Andre the Giant. When Andre defeated Hulk Hogan in 1988, Andre sold the title to the Million Dollar Man immediately, ending Andre's reign at 1 minute and 48 seconds. This would mark Andre's first and only WWE title reign in his iconic career, and it couldn't even last 2 minutes. This record has a strong possibility of being broken, and it would likely be shattered thanks to the involvement of the Money in the Bank briefcase. If a wrestler wins the WWE title, then is instantly cashed in on, there's a distinct possibility that it takes the Money in the Bank holder less than 1 minute 48 seconds to get the job done. But there you have it folks, WWE records nobody wants to break. Should we have a part 2? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.